Tell me one country where there isn't a problem because of Muslims. There is only one problem and it is a global problem. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. Okay, so in Sri Lanka they have been doing forced cremations of COVID-19 victims. Now in faiths like Islam amongst other religions, doing a cremation is not allowed. Yeah, we only do burials. Now I know what you guys are thinking, I don't care what you guys want, it's about what's the safest thing to do. Okay, well the authority that the world is following at this moment in time is the World Health Organization and they've said both cremation and burial are fine. And following that, pretty much every other country on the planet is cool with that. Except one. Can you guess who? Romania? It was it was Sri Lanka. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought it was obvious. No, not really. No? Even Amnesty International have spoken out and said, yo, this isn't right. You can't be doing forced cremations. And Sri Lanka has said, yo, we got our reason. And it's just unscientific, unproven. It's not even worth saying, frankly. Those people that are familiar with what's going on in Sri Lanka, Romania, which is not very many of you, there is high tensions between the the Muslims and the Sinhalese and, and the Buddhists. We certainly believe that elements of the BBS have been inciting hatred, okay, which has led to violence. There's no doubt about that. And as the current leader is up for re-election and most of his vote base are the Sinhalese and the Buddhists, at the moment he seems to be making them happy by doing stuff like this. So it doesn't seem like he's going to be revoking this and it seems like it fits his agenda sort of thing. The Buddhist nationalist group Bodu Balasena, which means army of Buddhist power, is accused of inciting hate and taking part in violent attacks on Sri Lanka's minority Muslim and Christian communities in recent years. The group campaigned hard for President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and celebrated his election victory. So I was looking at the videos, there's very few videos on this sort of stuff but when I was scrolling down in the comments, there was a theme that I saw, a lot of, yeah, and Sri Lanka seems to be jumping on this right wing bandwagon now, yeah, uninformed bandwagon, and most of the comments were like, yeah, wherever Muslims are, how come there's problems? Why are Muslims causing the problems everywhere? What is it with Islam and the Muslims that is always problems wherever they are? What? Well first of all mate, if you were to replace Muslim with Jews, that would be absolutely unacceptable and straightly condemned as anti-Semitic. Then why is it okay for you to use the word Muslims? Because that is Islamophobic. But if I was to entertain this question, this question actually exposes the poor understanding of geopolitics of the questioner number one. Yeah! And number two, it exposes the skewed understanding of our history. Okay, so why does it seem like Muslims are causing the problems everywhere? Go on, go on, go on. Number one, Muslims have been very politically and religiously influential. Let me just take three big empires here. Yeah? You've got the Mughal Empire. They have been ruling over India for a long time, mate. And you've got the Ottoman Empire, which was ruling Southwest Europe amongst many other places. And of course you've got the Umayyad rule, which incorporated you ruling Spain for 800 years. So clearly they don't want a repeat of that. Number two, you've got natural resources. Yeah, like oil. And that's because the Saudis sold their oil in American dollars. That's what literally kept up the American and boost the American economy and the currency. We protect Saudi Arabia, would you say they're rich? And I love the king. And I'm not going to destroy the economy for our country by being foolish with Saudi Arabia. And of course you got opium in Afghanistan uh, that's used to make heroin. So number two is natural resources. We've secured the oil and therefore a small number of US troops will remain in the area. And number three, <laughs> resisting control. Yeah, you've got the US that have admitted, yeah, we funded Al Qaeda, yeah, we funded IS. We have totally destabilized the Middle East. It's a disaster. I call President Obama and Hillary Clinton the founders of ISIS. They're the founders. 
we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Let me be absolutely clear. We have acted because it is in our national interest. Yeah. To do so. And naturally now, IS, the biggest victims of IS, are Muslims <laughs> and we're resisting. The biggest victims of IS are Muslims. <laughs> the biggest victims of IS are Muslims. <laughs> well, naturally, when things go out of control, rather than, you know, promoting blame on yourself, it's easy just to blame the religion. It did not start with Donald Trump. He is a symptom, not the cause. He's just capitalizing on resentments that politicians have been fanning for years. Interfering with the ruling of Muslim countries, like if some of you are curious as to why Egypt doesn't interfere in um, Palestine and Israel, you got to search something called the Camp David Accords. Their silence has been bought and people are naturally cheesed off. And of course you have false borders that have been drawn. And listen to the names, do they sound like Muslim names to you? Yeah, Durand Line, that's the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, that's still disputed till today. What about the Radcliffe Line? Yeah, does that sound like a Muslim name to you? That's the Kashmir line that's still causing issues till today. Have you heard of the Berlin Conference? When Europe literally drew borders and divided up, it's called the scramble for Africa and even till today there's issues in Africa because of that. Or what about Sykes and Pico? Does that sound Muslim to you? And they drew lines in the Middle East dividing it amongst each other. Yes, that's right and that's again that's causing issues till today as well. These names that I've mentioned, every Muslim needs to know because I'm sorry, you can't be coming up to us and making it seem like it's number one Islam's fault or Muslim's fault. It's just statistically destroyed argument frankly because we all know frankly less than 0.2% of Muslims are terrorists. You know what I'm saying? You can't be coming up to us and then blaming our religion by taking ayahs out of context. It just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, if you look around the way Muslims are being persecuted and when we raise our voice you say oh you guys cause a problem. I'm sorry if anybody has any basic understanding of geopolitics. Take Iraq, before the invasion in 2003 there were no recorded suicide attacks in that country's history, none. Since 2003, 1,892 suicide attacks. In the 14 years before 9-11, there was one suicide attack on Pakistani soil, one. In the 14 years since, 486 suicide bombings causing more than 6,000 deaths. And the story is tragically the same in Somalia, Yemen, Libya, Nigeria and Syria, where the situation is now so dire that you'll never believe who the former head of the CIA has apparently called on for help against ISIL. Yep, Al-Qaeda. Full circle, full failure. And of course the media, then you know it's nothing to do with Muslims and Islam. 1790s, the boogeyman, yeah, the monster of America was the Bavarian Illuminati. Yeah, it was actually a group, yeah, I'm not making it up. And then 1850s, the boogeyman were the Catholics. Then in 1900s, the boogeyman were communists and now they're Muslims. Yeah, that's why I say it's important to know your history. It's not just the Muslims. This has been going on for a long time. It just bodes well for governments to have a boogeyman so they can increase the control because with fear, people give up their rights and privacy and it's easy for the governments to keep control. Hope you guys benefited from this. I'm sorry, I just get really passionate and cheesed off when even in this day and age somebody comes and tries to pin the blame on Islam. I'm sorry, you my friend are an ignoramus when it comes to geopolitics. Uh, that, um, uh, let's put it this way, money trumps um, peace sometimes. <laughs> Dang. Open up a book, learn about this and then maybe we'll have a conversation, okay? Alright guys, until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.